Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, former House of Representative member of PME Bamidele and another APC supporter shot in controversial circumstances by a policeman during a rally by the party in Adoikichi. President Buhari insists corrupt individuals are fighting against his administration's anti-graft campaign amidst the recovery of admits that the recovery of all stolen funds is impossible. Appeal court discharges and acquits former Director General of Nimaza, Patrick Akobo Lakemi, in a case of 2.6 billion Naira fraud. And highest ranking North Korean official to visit the US in almost 20 years meets with President Donald Trump in the White House. On business news tonight, thought leaders and policymakers from Nigeria and the UK examine best options to attract global capital for Nigeria's economic development. On sports news, Nigeria Super Eagles ready for epic clash with England in a warm-up match at Wembley Stadium tomorrow. Hello there, and from Abuja, Defence Headquarters vows to no longer tolerate what it describes as unfounded allegations from Amnesty International against the Nigerian military. We begin with the breaking story we're following at this time, and that is coming from Ikiti State in southwest of Nigeria. There you have it, a former member of the House of Representatives who also contested the just-concluded APC governorship primary in Akiti State, Okwayemi Bamidele, being carried out after he was shot today. Bamidele and one other party loyalist were shot at the takeoff campaign of the APC governorship candidate Kaede Fayemi in the state capital, Adoikiti. The two of them have been rushed to the hospital, but there are conflicting reports about the real cause of the incident, while some are alleging that it was an accidental discharge Others claim it was an attempt targeted at the APC governorship candidate. Meanwhile, police authorities in Ikiti State say that they have arrested the police officer who fired the shot and the politician who allegedly withdrew his, him from his duty post in Lagos. The police public relations officer in Ikiti State, Mr. Caleb Ikechuku, speaks on the incident. Today, the 1st of June 2018, at about 700 hours, the policeman who has accidentally shot Okwaya Emiba Midele and one other have been arrested. He is attached to 20 p.m. of the cage at Lagos, Lagos State, where he was posted in bank guard duty somewhere in Ikeja. The policeman came on illegal duty to Ikeja State. The politician who conspired and removed the said policeman from where he was posted by his squadron commander and came to Abiyakiti with him for an unofficial reason have also been arrested. Meanwhile, the victims of his accidental discharge are currently responding to treatment at the hospital. And while the camp of the APC in Ikiti State is battling to get over the shock of the shooting, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Kolak Boishola, and the governor of the state, Ayodele Faeshe, took the party's campaign to the head office of motorcycle riders in the state. The carnival-like visit saw the candidate of the PDP promising the union that he would continue to support them, just like Governor Faeshe did. The union, in turn, pledged their support for the candidate in the coming governorship election. There are three things that determines whether an election is going to be won or not. The most important of the three is the people. You also have the platform and then, of course, your personality. By the grace of God, uh, I have the right personality. I have the right platform, which is People's Democratic Party. And we have the people behind us. President Muhammad Buhari has accused the opposition of looting so much money that his administration may not be able to recover all. 
is said for the reason that they are able to fight his administration through mischief. The president spoke when he received the Buhari media organization at the State House in Abuja. The group, formerly known as Buhari Media Support Group, is led to the, uh, to the villa by its national coordinator and comprises retired and serving media practitioners, among others. President Buhari praised the support group for its steadfastness, moral uprightness and sacrifice. I know you have needed a price. Price, physical and mental and material. Because, as I kept on saying, the opposition now are sitting on incredible resources, which I'm afraid we cannot get at it all. For that reason, they are in a position to sponsor mischief from different angles, which, in spite of the incumbency of the government, we cannot absolutely, uh, you know, stop. It is you that are quietly and openly fighting it, and I, as I said, I cannot thank you enough for that. Uh, your opinion is, is just a question of principle, not materialistic. And the strength of the moral uh, courage you have, and the physical courage you have, and the sacrifices you have made in losing friends, you know, because uh, I'm sure someone will be telling you, okay, you have been supporting Buhari and writing in this government. What the hell did you get out of it? <laughs> And staying with politics, the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, is asking Nigerian youth to disregard the joke from the president asking them not to contest the presidency in 2019 general election. A statement from the party's publicist, Kola Logbodion, describes the joke as degrading, unpresidential and completely unacceptable. The statement adds, quote, the president's comments further showcases the disdain with which Mr. President holds the youth who he had earlier described without apologies as lazy and lovers of freebies, end of quote. Mr. Ologbodino explains that an attempt by the president to intimidate the youth from contesting against him in 2019 shows that he is not in support of the not-too-young-to-run law and only assented to it because he had no other option under the 1999 constitution as amended. But well, the leadership of the ruling All Progressives Congress thinks otherwise. They have described the signing of the Not Too Young to Run bill into law as a fulfillment of the party's promise to Nigerian youths. A statement from the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Mr. Bolaji Abdullahi, says that the president's action is indeed a major milestone in advocacy efforts to ensure increased participation and inclusion of youths in politics. The statement says, quote, we are confident that the new law will inspire new thinking amongst many Nigerian youths pertaining their role in elections and politics. Youths should not be used as disruptive elements, thugs and social media mobs. It is possible for young people to lead politically and occupy elected positions, end of quote. Apart from congratulating the president, the party also commended the Senate president, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, under whose leadership the bill was passed into the National Assembly and forwarded for presidential assent. The APC has also described the comments of the APC as a, of the PDP as a killjoy and unnecessary divisive politics over the bill sponsored in the National Assembly. And just the day after the now famous Not Too Young to Run bill was signed into law, the group that championed the campaign outside the National Assembly wants political parties to reserve 50% of party tickets for capable, competent and morally upright youths aspiring across all elections in 2019. The co-convener of the group, Samson Itodo, stated this in a press conference on the presidential assent to the age reduction bill. 
While appreciating President Buhari for sending to the age reduction bill, the group states that signing the bill into law is not sufficient to guarantee youth representation in politics, saying that 52% of registered voters are young people between the age of 18 and 35 years, and if the political class wants the youth to vote, they must reserve tickets for youth aspirants. The movement therefore makes the following demand. One, that the National Assembly should review its vote on the age qualification for the Senate and the governors. And this review should be in tandem with the proposal of, by the movement that the, president, um, the age qualification for the president was 30 years and not 35, the governors from 35 to 30, and Senate to 30 years. That political parties should reserve 50% of party tickets for credible and competent and morally upright youth aspirants across all elections in 2019. The third demand is that the government, the National Assembly, as well as the President, should expedite action on assenting to electoral reform bills bordering on limiting campaign expenditure and the cost of securing party nominations. The fourth is that political parties must uphold the principles of transparency, democracy, and accountability in party primaries. To celebrate this landmark achievement, the movement will be hosting a Not Too Young Toronto celebration conference on June 28, 2018, in Abuja. The national chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress, John Oyego, has officially announced his decision not to recontest the chairmanship position of the party ahead of the June the 23rd National Congress. Chief Oyego did not give any reason for his withdrawal from the chairmanship race but it may not be unconnected to recent pressure from some quarters, particularly from some state governors who have been clamoring for a change of leadership in the party. A few months ago, President Muhammad Buhari condemned the extension of the tenure of the party's leadership, describing it as illegal and unconstitutional. Chief Oyogun's decision leaves former Edo State Governor Comrade Adam Zoshomale as the only candidate who has indicated his intention to contest for the chairmanship seat of the party. A 2018 Trust and Credibility Survey on key institutions in Nigeria shows that government institutions are the least trusted in Nigeria. And that's according to the report published by Elderman in conjunction with Chain Reactions Nigeria following a careful research and analysis of key sectors in the country including business, media and non-governmental organizations. According to the Managing Director of Chain Reactions Nigeria, Mr. Israel Jaesimi, government needs to recruit experienced professionals to help bridge the trust gap, especially as the nation midwives another political transition. An international business research agency, Idel Man, in conjunction with Chain Reactions Nigeria, presents a trust and credibility survey on Nigeria's key institutions. But trust actually has material business impact. When an organization is trusted, consumers to a high degree of 88% will buy their goods and services. After 17 years of assessing trust and credibility across the globe, Adel Mann, in partnership with Chain Reactions Nigeria, is extending its survey to Nigeria to highlight the importance of trust in nation building. People who are in charge of the task of reputation management for government are not the right people qualified to do that job. The dissemination of the report will help us appreciate the issue of trust and credibility as it affects the successes, the challenges, and the salient impact of government policies and programs in various social, political, economic sectors in the country. According to the President of African Public Relations Association, the essence of the Edel Mann Trust Barometer is to help government bridge the trust gap by using the professional instrument of public relations. We must sell our relevance and value as public relations practitioners. Otherwise, why should anybody buy us? 
we must be concise and exact with the value we bring to the table. We must advocate more, we must market more, and we must engage more. It's more of a moral imperative for journalists to take the time to uncover the stories and to really get to the truth rather than focus on sensationalization or breaking a story or reporting via clickbait. There is a need to redesign the architecture for government communication in this country. There's a general consensus here that there should be efforts to rethink the media and leverage on a cross-channel strategy to bring back voices of authorities in a positive light. In part two, after the break, tonight our spotlight turns on the judiciary as we continue our assessment of three years of the Buhari administration. We have a senior advocate of Nigeria, Professor Epiphany Azinge, live in our Abuja studio to dissect the issues. Please stay with us.